from the Computer Museum in Mountain View, California. It's the Cube covering ACG Silicon Valley Grow Awards. Brought to you by ACG Silicon Valley. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're in Mountain View, California at the ACGSV Awards, the Grow Awards, 14th annual. We've been coming for a couple years, about 300 people celebrating. Um, you know, really there's a lot of networking and it's an interesting organization. Check it out, we're excited to have our next guest. He's Nick O'Keefe, partner of Arnold and Porter. Nick, great to see you. Likewise, great seeing you, great to talk to you. So we were talking a little bit off camera. You came to Silicon Valley in 2000 and, uh, and, and we're saying you've seen a lot of changes in those 18 years. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's epitomized by the great gathering that we have here today. Um, as I was saying earlier, you know, when I came, I'd worked in Silicon Alley. Silicon Valley was sort of a bigger version of Silicon Alley and it's just kept growing. Um, now the, you know, the, the practice between East Coast and West Coast has converged. I mean, there's the, some of the biggest you know, most successful companies in the world are uh, based here now and doing some of the biggest deals. And um, it's just incredible in such a short period of time how that's happened. Um, and as, as I was indicating earlier, you know, one of the things that really opened my mind, to, uh, opened my eyes to uh, how successful Silicon Valley is, is um, I opened up the uh, Middle East offices to uh, another law firm around about the time of the Great Recession. And uh, it seems like every country is trying to emulate Silicon Valley. You know, we advise on how they could replicate it, what kind of laws they'd have to put in place, what kind of ecosystem they'd have to build. And there's just something really unique here that it's really difficult to uh, emulate and different countries are trying right, to do it's it. Because it's all industries, right? All industries tend to aggregate and congregate around a, usually a specific location or one or two. You think of financial services in, in New York and London because you know you get the people and those people leave and start new companies. You have the schools that drive people in there. So it's just, it's tough to, it's tough to replicate a whole ecosystem if you don't have all those compo uh, components. And then as it gels for a while, I think the barriers to entry become even higher. So you get different versions of it, but really not the same. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we have all the ingredients here. We have the great uh, educational institutions, you know, Berkeley, Stanford. Um, you have the financial institutions, all the venture money. Um, very sophisticated population. I mean, it's just wonderful living here. Just so many smart people around that, you know, you can't just lift them up and put them somewhere else. I mean, uh, they all have ties in the community and yeah, it's very tough replicating it. What's interesting about financial services you mentioned, you know, typically that's been a New York based uh, practice, but with FinTech, you're seeing some of that migrate over here. You know, uh, cryptocurrencies, a lot of that technology is being developed here and that's really a convergence of financial services and tech and Silicon Valley is the hub of that. Yeah, I really think that Stanford and Cal don't get enough credit in Santa Clara and some of the other schools, but those two particularly, because they attract really great talent. They come, the weather's great, they've got a culture of innovation, they've got very nice connections with the local business uh, community, so people don't leave. So you've got this right. constant influx of smart people and they stay where a lot of other places, even great academic institutions, don't necessarily have the business climate, the, the weather climate, or kind of the ecosystem to keep their brightest there locally. So I think that's just a huge driver. Yeah, absolutely, I completely agree. And there's, even if they don't stay, they still maintain their ties here. Um, you know, people from all over the world come to study here, as, as you're indicating. Um, you know, I'm doing a deal currently with uh, some Chinese people who did graduate research um, locally, and they formed a very successful startup in China that we're currently, uh, you know, uh, doing a deal with. And you know the fact that Stanford, you know, they couldn't be where they were if they hadn't gone through Stanford, and it, they developed ties with the the region and with the companies in the region. So they're very much sort of a diaspora of Silicon Valley, uh, the way they've operated. Right. What is your take on China? Because to me, China is the China is the big competitor. That's the one I think where there's the potential because they've got a huge internal market. They're really good at fast following, and you look at Alibaba Cloud and and some of the big, big players over there, I think that's really where the biggest threat to the current U.S. incumbents is going to come. It's very interesting. It's sort of two-faceted. Two On the one hand, obviously a huge population, and as the country develops, I mean, ultimately, you know, within the fairly near future, the, the um, gross national product is expected to overtake the U.S. 
But you have sort of a different culture and, you know, they have the same challenges as everyone else does to sort of replicate Silicon Valley. I don't think they'll ever take Silicon Valley, you know, um, you know take that crown away from them. And I think um, what, I'm, what I'm seeing now in a couple of deals is, so the current administration is obviously trying to defend the US trade position, but it's having deleterious effects in that it's preventing Silicon Valley companies from growing and from doing deals. You know, a lot of the Chinese funds are looking to invest in the US, where there's currently some regulations that are expected to be proposed uh, next month um, that could inhibit uh, Chinese investment in the US. Now, that's not, not good for Silicon Valley. So, you know, the attempt is to sort of protect the US economy. But, you know, I can see certain um, effects that are happening that are, are not helpful. So yeah. it's, it's interesting. There's sort of a symbiotic relationship between uh, development here in the US and development in other countries. And it's difficult to fight it because you can have weird effects. You know, I think the US, it's just a, a unique country. And, you know, I think it'll always be unique. And, you know, I'm, I personally, I, I'm not, I don't, I'm, I don't have a fear that China is going to somehow usurp the position the US occupies or, or India, another huge com uh, country. I'm just very bullish on, on Silicon Valley and the US generally. Yeah, it is amazing because I've been here, I've been here a little bit longer than you and it just, it just keeps reinventing, right? It's just wave yeah. after wave after wave. It was originally silicon and microprocessors and right. then it's software and then it's IoT and now you see all the automotive people have innovation centers here. Yeah. So wave after wave after wave just continues to come and then we're going to have you know, 5G and just this whole kind of move to asymptotically approaching zero cost of store, compute, and networking, and infinite, basically, amounts of those on tap really opens up a huge opportunity. It really does, yeah, and it's, <laughs> a lot of it's going to come from here. Yeah, all right, Nick, well, thanks for taking a few minutes of your time and uh, stopping by. You bet, my pleasure. All right, he's Nick O'Keefe, I'm Jeff Rick. You're watching theCUBE from the ACGSV Awards, Grow Awards in Mountain View, California. Thanks for watching.